Well, good morning YouTube. Just to wrap up the X-Cable issue I was having. Number one, the swapping of the cable, taking this end out and the, the other end there and reversing them seemed to do the trick. I've been printing now for a couple of weeks with no issues and I just wanted to show you the symptoms. So if you have the printer on and this blue LED up here doesn't come on and if you turn on the heater and that red LED doesn't come on that's a sign that this cable needs to be reseated. So I'll turn the printer on here and you can see this blue power LED comes on right away and when I had the problem with the cable that wasn't coming on. I did end up ordering a replacement from Type A Machines. It was $35, which actually I don't think is too bad because just the uh, raw ribbon cable, I think when I purchased some for my Raspberry Pi, was on the order of like $25, if I remember right. And then these have these um, positive uh, retention connectors on the end that click in there. A lot of the flat flex cable just goes into a connector on the circuit board and then you flip down a holder to hold the cable in. These have the actual uh, physical connector attached to the cable. I don't know what uh, what these are called. You know, what I'm not sure of is if this connector is just attached to the cable and that's the, the end of the cable itself or if the cable terminates inside of here and then has its own connections. But I figure it's probably worth getting the spare cable just in case. It took about a, oh, a couple of days for this to show up and I figure if I'm down and unable to print at some point having a spare on hand would be a handy thing to have and let's see the million cycle number that I found is on type A machines they say they've tested this cable to a million cycles although as I showed you a million cycles even printing a part like that just a simple little cube doesn't take much if you could hit a million cycles just printing four little cubes a day one inch tall and in about a year and a half that's a million cycles. I found one other flex cable manufacturer the specs on the cable itself they they listed uh, at least a hundred million cycles but even a hundred million if you start printing parts that have that level of detail. So yeah even uh, small part like that has a lot of movements in a uh, even a single layer guessing I'm way over a hundred million cycles because I tend to print parts like that in fact today I'll be printing 12 parts similar to that this morning and I might print another 12 in the afternoons and I guess one of the advantages of reversing the cable is that you're changing the direction that it's supporting its weight so when you flip it around it's now going to be bending up that way so yeah it's probably a good idea maybe every six months or so just disconnect that connector and swap the cable ends around just to equalize the uh, force so let me show you the uh, I'll turn up the extruder here and you can see there's the extruder power light right there. So that's your clue that the extruder is getting power. And you'll notice this red light will be on. The extruder is now heating up. Pretty soon the fan will start. So there's the extruder cooling fan. And then pretty shortly the red LED will start to flash. And that's showing the pulse width modulation. I'm going up to 250 C. I'm printing ABS plastic, so it's got to go pretty high. Yeah, there we go. So now it's into pulse width modulation. And let me try to extrude a little filament. Yeah, there we go. 
So we've got some plastic coming out now. Yeah, so there's no other lights on there. That was one thing I wanted to check. I, I didn't know if there was a light for the stepper motor driving the extruder right here. I guess that one you can see if it's running. So then I'll shut it off and there it goes. So yeah, I've got to get this ready, get the bed heated up and print some more parts today. But So swapping that around, you just take this end out, you take this other end out here, and you put this end over here and this end over there. And they only go in one, one way, so you can't mess them up. If you know what these connectors are, what they're called, or if these are something that could be made for a reasonable price, because I figure $35 isn't bad, but if I could repair that cable for $10 versus buying a new one, that would be worth it. If it's going to cost me $30 to buy all the parts and I have to buy a $200 tool to put those connectors on, I guess I'll just buy a few extra pre-made cables or if there's a way if you know if there's a way to remove these connectors and then just replace the cable what I might do is I'll wait till this cable completely fails I imagine at some point it's going to break you know if one of the connector tracks inside the ribbon cable breaks that's the end of the cable so at that point I might try tearing one of these apart and seeing if I can uh, figure out what's going on in there but for now, this cable works. I've got a spare, so I'm going to just leave well enough alone, I think. So, yeah, if you have any background with these ribbon cables and these little uh, end connectors for those, this is the first time I've seen a connector like that on a flat flex cable. So if you know what these are called or if they're, if they're user serviceable, uh, post up in the comment section down below. And as always, thanks for watching.